other video, we spoke about the importance of having your hardware and your software both working on the same SDK. Well, there's actually two portions of the hardware that need to be updated. What we're looking at right now is the Project Tango update, which is a device update. And this is where you can actually go into the settings. Actually, let me go back and show you how you can do this. If you go into settings, you can actually click on about the tablet and you can come up here to system updates. And if there's a system update available, then this is what you'll get. You'll be able to do this system update. And all you have to do is, actually, is just click here on uh, restart and install, and it will restart and install your new um, system update for this particular, as you can see, it says Pythagoras. Once that's complete, then we can go ahead and update the Tangle Core. The next update is actually the Project Tangle Core update, which can be found on the Google Play Store. This update, along with the system update, will then sync up your hardware correctly. And as you can see, this one came out 6-11-2015, and it's the Pythagoras update. It's the same update we just installed for our system hardware, and it's going to be the same update that we're going to install for our Unity SDK. So remember, there are three portions that need to be updated. Two on the hardware with the system device and with the actual core, Tango Core in the Play Store, and then your SDK. We've gone ahead and updated our hardware. Now it's time to update our software. Now if we go back to the Project Tango website and we click on support, followed by downloads, we have access to three things here on the downloads page. One, to the release notes. We can go ahead and check out what's happened, what's changed in this particular release. Uh, then we have the actual SDK packages. And then down here we have some extra information, including older versions, in case you ever needed that. What we want to do is, is we want to actually download the Unity SDK. So we'll click on that. You can read the terms and conditions and then hit uh, I have read them and then download the actual SDK. I've already done that and I might as well have zipped it. Now when you unzip you'll get two files. You're going to get a PDF that will explain pretty much what we're talking about uh, in this video as well as our Pythagoras Unity or Tango SDK update. Now I have Unity running here and actually this is me I've already double clicked on it to, to import it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to halt on importing that. And I want to show you something. And that is that I already have both a Tango and a Plugins folder in here. And when you install um, the Project Tango SDK for Unity, you get these two folders. Well, actually, you get inside of the Plugins Android, you get quite a number of folders and files. And then you get this Tango SDK um, folder. Now, the thing is, 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 if I was to import all of those assets, if I double click on this, you'll see something. It's telling me that all of these files are new. Now, if you've updated um, other packages, uh, you see I have quite a few over here. Amplify Color, Motion, um, you know, Colorful. When there's new files, what it typically does is, is, or what you're expecting to do is just to replace the old files or just include what's new. But that's not what's happening here. This is actually importing everything. And so what's going to happen is, is once I import this, you'll actually see something that is going to cause you a lot of grief later on. So pay very close attention to this. Number one, we have two Tango cores. Uh, you'll see that with with a few other files, but uh, so you already see that's already doubled up. If we come into here, this is another problem. As you can see, just from over here, we have two Android manifest files, and this is what tells and um, Android how to handle our app. Now, what you're expecting is that since I I'm importing a new asset that it's going to respect whichever one is newer, but that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is it's actually going to import, it's going to maintain the original files. So as you can see, kill meta one and kill meta two, 
what will actually happen is it's just going to use original SDK that we have, which is actually Nash. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a Nash S Unity SDK software on a Pythagoras hardware, and you're going to end up having issues when you do that. Uh, this may not be a huge update for Unity. I think there were just a few files that changed, um, and maybe the addition of a, of a new namespace or maybe a new folder. However, progressively as each SDK changes, it's going to cause problems. So what you want to do first is just completely delete. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this Android folder only because I know everything in here is coming from the Project Tango as well as the Tango SDK itself. If you don't know which files, then you can look at the PDF and it tells you exactly what files need to be deleted just in case you're a little nervous that you might delete something from another package. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And now we can re-import our SDK. And now it will correctly install. There you go. I just had to clean out some errors. All right, so we've installed the SDK. What if you're using some of the example files? That's a whole nother mess. All right, so I typically like, I'm, um, um, you know, we use Git a lot, and we use GitHub and we use uh, Bitbucket as well. And pretty much, Git has. We went to. Uh, you know, a little bit in the other video, Git has the ability to really manage and easily access, uh, you know, development or, or, or version information. Now, when we're here, we're looking at the Tango examples. Typically, when you when you use Git or GitHub, what you'll find is, is you'll see something along the lines of, this was updated eight days ago. Um, so you can click on here. Actually, we're going to go to Experimental and Augmented Reality and assets because that's where our things are and you'll notice something you have this was two months ago this was updated eight days ago so you automatically know which files are actually new and so if you have a project where you're just taking bits and pieces this is a really good way to actually uh, you know guess which files you need to update because you don't want to you know import the whole thing in there so in our case I know that we're gonna need this Google Unity um, just because it was it was just added, uh, just in case there's any names. Let's see, actually, yeah, you never know. This may end up hurting us later on, so we'll import that as well. Uh, and we want to go to our scripts. This AR screen, I believe we're definitely using it, but we don't quite know what was changed in here. We could just literally copy and paste this. If you click on, uh, so you have this raw button here. You click on raw. And you can just literally copy and paste. That's a really good way to easily do it if, it, if it's a simple file. However, you have the ability to look at this history. Now, if I click on history, you'll see that we have um, these two current commits that we can view. Now, the way it works is you actually click here, and, it, and this ID here actually refers to this commit. And so basically, when you click on this, what it does is it does a diff, git diff, and it checks what the difference between the old files and the new files are. Now, you might have noticed something. I'm, I'm trying to look at what's the changes for just one file, yet I'm seeing all of this. Now, the reason for that is is when these commits are being made, these commits aren't being made in a typical uh, fashion. So you see there's 21 uh, commits. Each commit is a full commit. So you're seeing, what you're seeing is, is a whole entire um, SDK update. You're not seeing incremental changes to files. And it's in, it actually hurts us later on because we can't tell what was changed and we don't know why they were changed because we're not, we don't get the comments, we don't get uh, you know all that extra data. So if I wanted to diff this you know, I can see what the difference between the original and the, the current version is. But what does that mean to me? That actually says nothing to us. So typically, when you work in Git, you normally give that extra information. But since we don't have that, what we can do is, is we can actually do some command line, which I, 
I'm going to actually pull in our notepad. I actually had to copy and paste this because there was no way I was going to type this up. Uh, and so what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to get diff and I'm going to look at branches. Now I'm going to just copy this real quick and just drop it in here. And then I'm going to explain what's going on here. So I'm going to break this up into the different calls. Uh, experimental project. Oops. And let me explain to you what's going on here. One, two, and three. So there's really three things that are going on here. One, this is what this is actually our git command. So we're calling git diff, which is saying git check what the difference is between, and then you tell it between what. You can do it between branches. In our case, we're doing just in between files. And so what we have here is is we have the origin, which is pointing to uh, this uh, git repository and I'm pointing to this release and then I'm telling it tell me, get this file and I want you to compare it to my local file which is the same exact location uh, this isn't supposed to be here that'll actually break and so so that's what we're doing we're, we're just going to check that so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these and we're going to do that again. I know this is going to fail because I have that bracket in there. Get diff origin. And I'm just going to get rid of the extra spaces. There you go. So if I run this, it's going to tell me it's having an issue. And I'm going to paste it again. And now when I paste it, what we're looking at now is literally just a diff for this particular file. And so what we have is this red means it was deleted, green means it was added. So um, actually that's it. <laughs> that's the only change that, that happened. So we have a function uh, if width ratio is greater than the height ratio. And what was changed was it looks like there was, oh, they flipped the way the, the method is called. So normalized offset comes before whatever value this is. And so that was what was changed. Now we're not going to just copy this one line. We can go ahead and, uh, you know, just import the whole entire file. Now that we know what file has been changed or files have been changed and what lines have been changed, the next question is: Is how do you now go about updating your project? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is is we're, we're working command line, so it's going to be a different process. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up again. If you are using the desktop version, you can go back and click on clone to desktop. Uh, that will clone it back, uh, a new version back to your desktop. If you click on download, then you just download the whole thing again. That's also cool. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going the route of using uh, our command line again. Now, the first thing you want to do is, is you want to get branch and see which branch you're on. That star tells me we're on master. Well, the thing is is that I kind of updated already. <laughs> and because I updated, I actually, when I do this command git fetch, which actually fetches our remote, which is actually the original um, repo that you're seeing on GitHub, it actually will put down, pull down both a tag as well as uh, the updated master and that just brings it down locally for me. Now the great thing is is I can actually go ahead and check out Pasha 47 and when I check out Pasha 47 I'm just going to do git branch again just to show you that we're on Pasha 47. When I um, check out Pasha 47 uh, I'm actually going to point this out because I don't know if you've noticed this, but over here is actually telling me what branch I'm on. That's that's a more uh, advanced topic. If it's something that, that, that you want me to go over, I can definitely go in, into how I got that to showcase what branch I'm on. Um, but So now that I'm here, Git gives us, and this is why we love using Git at Passion 47. This is just, uh, it's a really, really, really solid uh, way to develop. I know that this branch is outdated um, compared to the master. So all I have to do is, is I can run a git command. Remember, I've already fetched it. I've already pulled it down. All I have to do is say git 
merge because I'm I want to merge, and I want to say uh, origin. Actually, let me show you why it's saying origin. If I do git branch and I say all, oops, git branch, lowercase a. Uh, and so what we have here, this tells us all the branches that we have. Um, and this is just saying that the remote branch is tracking our origin master. And so what we want to do is, is our origin master is what we have locally. And so I want to, because what you can do is, um, because I did git fetch, I actually pulled down uh, the or the stable version from GitHub, and I pulled it down to my local system. And so that's what the origin is. The origin is our local system, whereas remote origin is up on the server. And so all I have to do is say git merge, and I want to merge the origin. And um, origin is, is where it is. Master is the actual branch name. Uh, and so when I say that and I hit enter, what will happen now is, is it's actually all those changes, basically. Uh, I'm just going to scroll up a little bit. Sorry. I'm so used to using a Wacom tablet. Every time I pick up a mouse, I feel like a, a, a duck walking. Uh, so what we have here is, is these are all the changes that were made and now have been merged into Passion 47. And so it, it, it gives you more information. We can make this more detailed, but for right now, that's all that matters. The files have been merged in. Now if I tell it get status, um, it tells me that there's nothing to commit. And so now we have up we've updated the files. We looked at how to grab files. We looked at how to look at the differences, and we looked at how to update the SDK. I hope this helps you out. I know that it's a it's a decently long video, but I'm like I said, I'm really hoping that uh, getting all this information and explaining the whole process to you will alleviate some of the mundane tasks and just let everybody focus on having fun and enjoying. That's what we're doing. 